It's minus 12 out and we decided to do iPhone 12 Pro Max versus Canon EOS R5. Can you see the difference? Look at this place. <laughs> 67th floor right here. Check it out. Look at this view. You guys have the craziest view in your life. I told you quarantine was like heaven. <laughs> oh my goodness. I wanted them to have a nice place to spend their quarantine and their first like few weeks here in Toronto, but I also, of course, got this for the views, you know. I'm so afraid of dropping the iPhone Pro <laughs> out the window. Do not drop it. Oh. It does look fancy, but there's some things that are a little bit not so high quality. Look at this. So you gotta go like this. Not, not quite as advertised. And then a lot of times there's a crack in here, so I have to cover it with clothing so that it doesn't make this high-pitched wind that's, noise. That's normal, right? That's yeah, that's a typical thing. It's always thing. when you spend this much money on Airbnb <laughs> that you gotta do these kind of fixes. Taking the photos over here, it's really bizarre. There's like nobody here. Just like a few randoms, but I've never seen downtown Toronto so deserted. Very interesting. Last spot, pretty nice. Nobody around, lake, city over there. Nice sunny day, it's cold, but the sun is fairly warm. I live in that building up there. <laughs> Top of that building. <laughs> That's high. And now it's time to see if we can tell the difference between a pro photography camera, a Canon EOS R5 with an expensive lens. This full package is like $6,000 versus just an iPhone 12 Pro Max. And we did this last year and it was really fun to see what the differences were and all that. And this year we're doing it again because the iPhone has gotten quite a bit better, bigger sensor, more better computational photography. And this year I got my brother to edit all the photos so I haven't seen them yet and I'm gonna do this challenge with you at the same time. Can we see the difference? Oh, and before I forget, we have a new motion graphics pack for Premiere Pro, and this one is for us content creators, especially you filmmakers. Thanks to the genius Nicholas Doretti, the guy who made my new logo and made it look all cool with animations and stuff. He helped me to make this motion graphic pack and he's now on YouTube. If you wanna see really cool videos about photography and editing and all sorts of cool stuff, highly recommend checking out Nicholas Doretti's channel. It's a good one. These motion graphics are gonna come in really handy when you're doing comparisons or when you wanna show your camera settings or you just wanna tell your audience to subscribe to your channel. It's so fast and easy to use these. You literally just drag and drop it, change the text, and then you can choose what things you want showing, whether it's the battery or the f-stop or the ISO, you get to decide. 13 assets for content creators, especially you filmmakers. I think this will save you a lot of time. We're gonna be using these a lot, so I hope it's okay that we all <laughs> use these. And make sure to check out Nicholas Doretti's channel. He's really cool. Okay, now it's time for the fun. Uh, can you see the difference? That book. Bring over the photos, are you done? Yes, sir. I've never done this before, I'm nervous. I'm so scared I'm gonna get like all of them wrong. Good luck. It's gonna be very hard <laughs> being not... able to see which one's iPhone and which one's I have one's a feeling I'm gonna, I'm gonna get duped. I'm gonna get duped, aren't I? And be honest, comment down below how many you get right. I'll try to give you guys some time to uh, decide with me. All right, photo number one. We have this nice shot of me in the city of Toronto. We had some fun shooting this morning. Right in the neighborhood. He does a really good job with the photos. If you want to see more of his photos, check out his Instagram. Okay, photo number one, A versus B. Okay, I think I, I think I think I know this one. They're they're surprisingly similar, but I'm gonna guess that um, judging by the sharpness in the buildings, I'm gonna guess that the first one is the iPhone and the second one is the R5. Bingo. Yes! <laughs> I didn't get duped right away at least. <laughs> I even desharpened everything in the <laughs> iPhone one. I gotta put like double time desharpen. Yeah, iPhone usually oversharpens and you can see it in the buildings. That was like the giveaway for me here. 
But I would say that I could, better, <laughs> I could, yeah, I could totally post the iPhone one and nobody would be like, that's an iPhone photo. No, definitely Nobody, not. I don't think so. I think if you're saying that you would see the difference. <laughs> mm. Okay, number two. All right, this one is a dead giveaway. We kind of wanted to test all sorts of uh, different settings. And because the iPhone isn't on portrait mode here, you can clearly tell which one is the DSLR. Plus, the R5 looks incredible here. Plus, we had Sigma 24 at 1.4 shallow depth of field, so yeah. Yeah, we got the shallow depth of field, but without the portrait mode on the iPhone, you get no depth of field. Like it's yeah. just everything is in focus. You can even see the people in the back. <laughs> yeah, everything is in focus. It's not bad, but I would have taken this in the portrait mode and yeah. then it would have been like, you can use that, I, I yeah. bet. But this photo looks great on the R5. Okay, two for two. All right, number three. Ooh, this one is much. <laughs> this is the hardest one, I would say. This one is tough. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't even know, I don't remember them anymore. I gotta get my phone and get the answers out. <laughs> oh my goodness, this one is a, <laughs> this one is a little tough. Okay, I'm gonna say, this is my guess. I hope I'm right. No, I don't know, I'm going back and forth now. <laughs> I think you're gonna get this one wrong. <laughs> I'm trying to see like, like the, the portrait mode is working really well. Okay, I, okay, I think I got this. Uh, a, I think A is the R5 and B is the iPhone. Oh, bingo! Yes! <laughs> you can see that the depth of field is a little bit more natural here than this one's like, yeah. you can see behind, but it looks good. At first I was like, the skin tones look nicer on the iPhone. That's like, that's rare. That's rare. I, did some, I did some work. Yeah, maybe you did some extra smoothing out. I did out. on the phone, Lightroom Mobile. I think what what gave it to yeah what gave it away to me is the hat. Seeing the top part yeah. of the hat, it's a little bit out. It's like a the the shallow depth of field is gradual yeah. versus on the iPhone. It's like you can see right. You it can just see stops right yeah. The, you. Every I'm completely in focus, even the back of my hat. But this is what threw me off was the hood is a little bit like. <laughs> so that's why I was like, wait a second, which is it? That one was that one was tight. That one was close. Okay, I'm doing good so far. Next one. Okay, we got A versus B. This is gonna be harder because landscape. Yeah, here's like you can't tell. The in difference. shots like this, like I would never know for sure. Like I'm I'm half guessing here. I'm gonna <laughs> this one is tough again. I don't know. Are you guys having a tough time? I'm having a bit of a tough time. I'm gonna say. I actually think that the iPhone is better at correcting for distortion. So I'm gonna say that B is the iPhone because the buildings are all straight and A is the the R5 and it's getting a little bit distorted because of the, the lens. I don't remember, I gotta get my phone. <laughs> We're in suspense now, you left me hanging. A is, A, A, is, the, uh, A is the R5 and B is the iPhone. Wrong! No! D1 is iPhone 12 and D2 is R5. Wow, okay, I got <laughs> duped. This, this is much wider. Um, Actually, yeah, uh, I should have looked at the sharp, sharpness again in the buildings. <laughs> if I compare the sharpness in the buildings, I wasn't, I think I need glasses, guys. It's, a, it's official, I need to get glasses, so I don't see the detail. <laughs> we got three more to go, three more to go. But again, I could post either of these on my Instagram, 100%, nobody would ever say, mm, yeah. why are you posting iPhone photos? No, no way. Social media now, it is so different. There's no way. Okay, next one. Uh, by the way, this is a pretty sick lookout at your Airbnb. Not a bad view for quarantine life. I would say this is, again, very good job by the iPhone. I had a lot of skin matching as well. Very, okay. Uh, mm, ah, mm. Okay, I. I think, yeah, okay, I, I, this, I know this one almost for sure. Camera A is the iPhone and camera B is the R5. Very good. You know how I knew? The iPhone does a way better job on the sky yeah. in terms of like, yeah. you exposing can almost get it. too much like, light there. Yeah, it's like, it just does such a good job with the HDR that like, but man, the, the portrait mode is getting really good. Yeah. Like really Even good. Even that, it looks kind of like a gradual depth of field. How is it this, like, oh. 
you, 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 you buy a six thousand dollar camera and lens setup, or you could just use your iPhone. For the next ten posts on Instagram, you should do only iPhone, but not oh, tell yeah. anyone until the tenth post made. Did you guys know the last ten are iPhone? By the way, oh man, yeah, I could again easily post either of these to Instagram. Easily, <laughs> no questions. Okay. I'm doing pretty good so far. I think I've only gotten one wrong. How many of you guys gotten wrong? Mm -hmm. You got the landscape wrong, yeah. This yeah. might be tough again, because it's landscape. Nope, I, it's dead oh, giveaway. Yeah. Oh, Easy no. for me, <laughs> Easy for me. I know this one again. 100% I know this one. Do you? I... <sighs> <laughs> I think 100% I, think I know. Okay, go Do over. you guys know? Okay, <laughs> camera A is the iPhone, camera B is the R5. Wrong! No! The, the, the HDR didn't kick in on the... Um, oh, on the iPhone, on the iPhone. <laughs> but I was surprised that the R5 had that much dynamic range that I was able to lift the shadows yeah. and bring down the highlights. So we're, what we're both laughing at is that CN Tower is really white on the iPhone shot. And I thought for sure the R5 is, because it was a very high contrast situation. But man, the iPhone still looks really good. Hmm. Again, like really good. Yeah. Easily post that on IG. No problems. Now, it would have been better if we got the HDR kick in. That's true. Then it would have been like impossible to know. That's the one thing, like, I wish you could say always put on the HDR. Always. Like, just have it on. I don't want to have to like trigger it. Yeah. I just want it on. Man, that's a good. <laughs> too, too wrong? Too wrong. <laughs> oh, man. The last one. Oh, this is again very tough. Th these close post portraits are hard. Like this is an amazing very portrait hard. camera nowadays. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, I, I the only reason I think I know this is because of the last one and the way the skin tones looked. But I almost feel like the skin tones look better in the iPhone shot if I'm right. Okay, I think that the camera A is the R5, camera B is the iPhone. Correct. I knew it. It's a little bit smoother, the skin here. Yeah, there's a little bit less less detail in the skin, which is uh, like a symptom of having a small sensor and they're doing noise reduction, whatever they're doing, special stuff. But in it some ways, good. yeah, it looks almost better. It almost looks like you have like a little bit of dirt or something on your face. Yeah, like. yeah, yeah, on the, on the R5 shot. I, yeah, again. <laughs> Both look great. I like the lighting is, it comes out different because of the HDR. Yeah. And I think I like the lighting better on the R5 photo. Yeah, I had a nice, I was trying to get this vignette on this shot with the yeah. iPhone, but it was hard to get. You very did good. impressive. You did good. That's what, two, two, so five, five out of seven, seven. right? That's, that's pretty that's, good. That's not bad, but also <laughs> I got duped twice. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? Oh my pass, goodness. You get a B plus. Okay, I'm curious. Were you surprised by the results, Steppo? Uh, yeah, I thought you would have got them all, but you didn't get all of them, and uh, I think it just shows that the iPhone is a very powerful tool in your pocket. Be honest, how many do you think you would have gotten wrong? <laughs> a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that good of a pixel peeper. So there you go. Can you see the difference? I'm curious how many of you guys got more wrong than I did, and how many of you got more right than I did. Comment down below. I want to know. I think what we can say from this experiment is that the computational photography plus having a little bit bigger of a sensor on the Pro Max um, is definitely making a difference. I think I had a way easier time seeing the difference last year with the 11 Pro. Now it's getting really hard on certain shots, like really hard. They're very, very close. And I gotta say, I love computational photography. It's incredible. But the downside is, is that it does sometimes fail on you. You kind of have to like learn the limitations of the iPhone and use the strength. So those like pretty up close uh, portrait, oh man, this thing is just going all the time. Those portrait shots are looking really great. But then, you know, when you go further back and you don't have that portrait mode, you're not getting any shallow depth of field. So that's when you rely on really nice composition instead of trying to get shallow depth of field. But I would say if you learn how to use an iPhone and use those strengths really well, man, you can make some incredible stuff happen with the camera that's in your pocket at all times. I think us photographers, videographers, we have very, very little to complain about in terms of gear nowadays. Plus, did you guys see new Sony A1? Oh, insane camera and then Fujifilm comes in. the new cameras. I thought the new cameras were gonna stop rolling out last year was crazy 
It's just continuing. Are you gonna switch to Sony for the A1? <laughs> maybe. If you, let me, if you let me borrow the camera for a while, maybe. I'll... I'm not buying you one. They're very expensive. It's a very, very promising looking camera, but also expensive. It's like 1DX range, just smaller body. All right, that's it for this video. Hope you liked it. Hope it put a smile on your face. I'll see you guys in the next one.